My name is John Falk. Uh, I was sent on assignment for National Geographic Adventure to the Democratic Republic of Congo to document an expedition by a primatologist named Joe Thompson. And this footage is of Joe, myself, my photographer Rob, and a um, official with the Congolese National Park Service called Lubuta, who works very closely with Joe Thompson. We're flying into our first village, Anga, right on the outskirts of this um, national park we're going to go into. That's the heart of the expedition. And in outside this village is an, uh, a parks department sort of um, base camp. And we're on a missionary plane because it's the only way you could get around in the Congo. There's no private uh, or even public airline. So you just hop rides with these uh, missionaries and pay dearly. Now as we, as we land, I mean, this it turns out this is a huge event for these people. I mean, when these planes come in, you know, Joe brings gifts, but it's it's like, you it's know, it's Christmas because it's a change yeah, of pace for these people. So when we came in, they lined the, the taxiway, you know, and there were hundreds of them. And then as we walked through the village to the parks department compound, the base camp, they followed us. Now here we are entering it. This is the prison. And there's a prison, the prison that they're building to keep poachers in. And now we walk in and those palm fronds are welcome for us. They've been put up to welcome us. And now the people have to stop following us. And they try to anyway, put up the gate. This is the otter. She was standing there during one of the uh, flag raising ceremonies and this poacher just basically wanders out of the jungle and he gives him tries to sell her a uh, the skin of an otter an endangered otter basically without realizing uh she's the last person in the world he wants to be doing that to. this is us starting out in Anga. this is the first day of the expedition we're about to walk about 30 miles and we have to lined up before lubuta that's lubuta are the porters is she the only and that woman, woman right there is the only woman porter and she turns out to be four or five months pregnant are you serious? and she gets the heaviest load she doesn't know that right now but it's coming and all those guys are the other porters and uh so we're waiting to get all the uh the load assigned to each porter and instead of 15 minutes it takes four hours and we're supposed to be gone at like 7 30 in the morning we end up leaving at about 11 30 i think which really set us back which meant at the end of the walk for a couple hours walking in the pitch dark in the middle of this jungle and the porters who were petrified of the night were freaking out the next morning actually they threatened a mutiny if we ever did it again because they believe the night's full of evil spirits and and witches and and dead ancestors and it's not a, and leopards which there are leopards out there and god knows there might be spirits and that's what they walked in we were in you know high-end foot gear and they walked in these uh, flip-flops. Now we're, we've pretty much assigned loads at this point and they've kind of lined them up. And now each one is sort of figuring out how best to carry it. And a lot of them basically get these, uh, these vines, tear them up or, or palm, and they make jerry-rigged backpacks. And that kid was sort of the leader of the Anga, the base camp kids. His father is a park guard, and uh, he's a really nice kid, and he was just into whatever was going on. And there's our gear, or part of it anyway. And a lot of that, I mean, that's like 80, 90, 100 pounds, some of it. And I'll tell you, going about 20 miles in, you're just dragging, and these guys are just carrying it. And I realized, yeah, they're in great shape and they're used to it, but you know what it turned out to be? Will. They were in much pain as almost you or I would be carrying it. And notice the herniated belly button on the... The kid there with the backpack, all these kids, the distended stomachs like and the herniated belly buttons, backpack. and they're the well off. We are now starting out. We're probably about three miles in on the first day, and we have to cross. We go into this, basically, it's a depression, and it's a swampland, and it's crisscrossed by a lot of streams and rivers, and they have these bamboo bridges, and really not bamboo, they're just wood. And we're, this is near patrol post Iamba, and with a pister and uh, some guides and we're looking for bonobos and we've basically tracked them or they've led us into like an old ground where they think they might come be coming back to nest and the man there is named Bula and that is Joe Thompson's right hand man she depends on him completely and he is a great bonobo tracker he's learned to be over the years and he's basically picked up that they're probably somewhere right around here now this pister is a local and he is an Ialima 
but he's been trained by the park guards to bring in bon uh, track Bonobo, and this is a trick. He's mimicking a wounded diker, which is, as I say, the Bonobo's idea of a burger al gratis. And, uh, and the idea is they'll come running through the forest to get it, but they never did. And now pits. So right in this area, right in this clearing, they were just probably there, maybe, you know, a couple hours earlier, eating these things, eating pits all day, laying in the ground and listening for people like us coming. And the problem was we constantly had these kind of sightings of, you know, there were indications they were all around, but we never could see them. And we learned after a while the reason was our pisters were scared of the bottom of And they kept sabotaging every time we'd get close. It was a fresh fruit, Tenness. which is a delectable. Tenness. And I taste it, it's very Tenness. bitter. But I guess if I was a Bonobo out there, I'd eat it too. Actually, I was close to eating it myself. The, uh, one of the things to know, they were scared because the Bonobo, they don't, you know, it's not an animal to them, it's a, another member of the forest, and for a lot of them, they're fallen humans. They see them as like, not as evil, but as dangerous. It's almost like running into another pack of humans that you don't know and you actually, you know, a, a rival clan, say. Back at patrol post Yamba, this is a uh, patrol post living here. When we weren't out, looking for Bonobo or marching, we would prepare food like that. 